I met with Rebecca who shares her intimate journey of how complementary therapy changed her life, so much so that she's now studying to be a nurse within the NHS. So Rebecca, you're at university and you're studying to be a nurse and you're in your first year and experienced lots of things through placement. So tell me from your perspective, how important do you think it is for people to understand how to look after themselves and their, their mental and emotional and physical health? Um, well, when I was first um, diagnosed with uh, depression and anxiety, I had absolutely no idea what was happening to me. I, I didn't understand, I just, things were happening, I didn't know. So um, I think, you know, learning from my course as well, that it's extremely important to understand because when you understand what's going on, it's easier to cope or you can easily alter things to make things better. Absolutely, and tell us a few more words about your personal story that led you to getting help through complementary therapy. Um, I was in Switzerland at the time, where I'm from, uh, I was 18. I uh, was on my first batch of antidepressants and the doctors decided that they were going to put me into psychiatric hospital. Um, putting on a mask after this just to get myself out because it seemed like I disappointed a lot of people with what had happened. I then quit school and came to Edinburgh where I thought things were going better but soon after that things didn't go so well so I went back to a, a GP. I was on uh, four different types of antidepressants. Um, every time going up to the highest dose and then changing it and just nothing was, was getting any better. They had offered me a cognitive behavioural therapy but it just, that wasn't the right way for me. Um, every time I was talking to someone it seemed like they were picking out the really small problems that didn't matter to me and I ended up leaving feeling worse. Um, so I was, in a, I was in the bottom of a pit. I didn't know what to do with myself. I just, I, I couldn't do it anymore. So I decided to try hypnotherapy. I had heard of this before, didn't quite know what it was, but I was willing to try anything to get better. You said that when you were in Switzerland, they wanted to put you in a psychiatric hospital, which is quite a severe diagnosis of where you were. Talk us through your journey of how you went from that state of mind to the lovely, calm, in control, confident woman that's sitting here today. Um, well, back back then in Switzerland, uh, like I said, I, I had no idea what was going on to, going on with me, and I was I was very very unhappy. And when I started doing hypnotherapy with with you, um, I, I don't know how, but it, it it did it did make me feel better. It made me more calm and relaxed. Like I was less under pressure. Like people weren't judging me for what I was feeling. Um, and I was, I was open to the, to that experience. I was open to the possibility that hemotherapy might actually work for me and be the thing that will turn me into what I am now. What do you think by working with a therapist who could give you the understanding of what was happening in your brain and different tools and resources did for you that kept you going in the right direction? And stopped you from going back to your old way? I learnt a lot. Um, you were quite open into the, the learning process, so you would, you would uh, draw pictures, you would um, scribble on, on paper to, to explain what exactly was, was going on and how things were, were working in my mind and how what you would do or what you would do to help um, would fix that. How important do you think it is for the NHS to make sure that they've got services that people like you can access rapidly in their jobs? I think it's very important that people have um, the service that they need when they need it. Uh, because letting things get out of hand is just the worst thing that can happen. Um, especially with mental health issues. 
a lot of things can, can get bad very fast. Um, so getting help as soon as possible is the best thing for someone who's struggling. And as, as a nurse, it's our job to know when and how to make patients better. And what difference do you think it made for you, Rebecca, to be able to get to the root of what caused it all in the first place, which, as you say, doctors unfortunately are quite limited at the moment in what they can offer as help so people can get labelled very quickly with depression which actually might not be depression and just given medication but it's fair to say you did suffer from depression so being able to actually get to the root cause of what brought that on in the first place what difference do you think that made? A huge difference because not not knowing why this was happening to me made things worse, for me anyway. Um, it, I really didn't know why I was feeling this way and I only, well, found out, we only got to the root of things through um, my treatment with you. And although it was weighing on me, like it was, I was almost obsessing over why is this happening to me that um, I couldn't function on anything else. What difference do you think it will make to transform the mental health of this country which is in a mental health crisis to have access to complementary therapies on the NHS? It will open a lot of windows for people who um, don't know what they're going through um, it will give people options on how they can get help um, because antidepressants, medication, uh, is not necessarily the answer. So we met over a year ago and just share with us how your life has changed as a result. Where are you now in your state of mind and being compared to where you were, Rebecca? I am a completely different person to what I was. Um, over a year ago. Um, you, you've said that through some of our sessions that you can definitely see a huge difference. I feel better, I'm happier, I'm more self-confident, I'm happy. 